India's private defense sector has taken a decisive step into next generation warfare. Larsen and Tobro's precision engineering arm has unveiled Chanakya, a decentralized UAV swarm autonomy framework. It is not about one road. It's about dozens and even hundreds thinking, adapting and fighting together. Today on Defence Dynamics, we break down what Chanakya really means and how it will physically manifest on India's borders from the line of control to the line of actual control. Chanakya is not a drone. It is a digital brain, an autonomy framework that allows multiple UAVs to operate as a self-organizing swarm. Unlike traditional drone operations, where every UAV depends on a ground controller or a satellite link, Chanakya enables distributed decision-making. Each drone shares data, processes threats locally and adapts its behavior in real time. If one drone is jammed, shot down or cut off, the swarm reconfigures instantly. No central failure point, no single command node to target. This is the shift from remote control platforms to autonomous combat systems. So why decentralized autonomy matters? Decentralized autonomy means you are no longer fighting a platform. You are fighting a system. There are no drone headquarters to be destroyed the intelligence is spread across the swarm, making it far more resilient in electronic warfare environments. So what does this mean in real terms? In real terms, Chanakya turns UAVs into thinking battlefield agents. A swarm can be tasked to scan terrain, identify targets, track movement, assign roles like scout, jammer, decoy or striker, and execute missions without waiting for human instructions. This dramatically compresses the sensor to shoot a loop from minutes to seconds. In a high-intensity conflict, speed is survival. Chanakya is about decision superiority, not just airframes. It's a kill chain revolution. When drone swarms process information locally, commanders don't need to micromanage. They issue intent and the swarm figures out execution. This speed advantage can decide engagements before the enemy even reacts. So how this manifests on India's borders? On the line of control, Chanakya enables persistent swarm patrols, dozens of low-cost drones watching infiltration routes, identifying launch pads and tracking hostile movement in real time. On the line of actual control, where terrain is vast and reaction windows are short, Swarms can monitor valleys, passes and build-ups without risking pilots or soldiers. If a confrontation escalates, some drones jam enemy radars, others act as decoy, strike UAVs, hit high-value targets, while the swarm adapts dynamically as losses occur. And this is area dominance without occupation. China's advantage lies in numbers. Swarm autonomy lets India offset that with intelligence, adaptability and resilience. You don't need parity in platforms. You need superiority in cognition. So why Chanakya changes India's military DNA? This is because it signals something bigger. India's private defense industry is now shaping doctrine, not just supplying hardware. By developing an indigenous swarm framework, India reduces dependence on foreign algorithms, inscripted links and black box autonomy systems. It aligns perfectly with Atmanirbhar Bharat, integrated theatre commands and future multi-domain operations. Most importantly, it prepares India for a battlefield where first casualty is communication and autonomy decides survival. Chanakya is not about replacing soldiers, it's about protecting them. China doesn't just give India more drones, it gives India a thinking swarm. One that watches borders, shapes battles and quietly rewrites how wars are to be fought.